the beginning. Today we're uh, going to talk. Today we're going to talk about God's masterpiece. Then we're going to look at God's rest next week, and then we're going to look at God creating uh, a little bit more detail of His masterpiece in chapter two. But uh, a Christian psychologist was once counseled uh, a woman who felt lonely and abandoned. As she explained how she felt, the psychologist would, couldn't concentrate on what she was saying because he kept on remembering the scripture in his mind. Uh, it says, uh, it is he who made us, it is he who made us, and not we ourselves. It is he who made us and not we ourselves. He kept on going in his mind as she was talking. This verse had no apparent connection to what her problem was, but he couldn't quit, he couldn't quit thinking about it. The psychologist didn't know what to say other than to quote the verse. The verse when she said, okay, now, now what do you think? And he just like, uh, he said, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, young lady. He says, I, I, I think God wants you to know something today. And he quoted the scripture. It is he who made us and not we ourselves. Does that mean anything to you? The woman immediately broke down and started crying. After composing herself, she she explained what it meant. She said, you know, I didn't tell you this in the beginning, God, but <clears throat> my mother got pregnant before uh, she was married. And all my, my, all my life, I believed I was a mistake, an unplanned accident, and that God didn't really create me. But I was just a mistake, an accident. When you quoted that verse, I pictured in my mind God forming me, me in my mother's womb. Now I know that God created me, and I'm not a mistake. Amen. Amen. And she said this, I will never be the same again. Thank you, God. I'll never forget this day Amen. as long as I live. Amen. It's a simple scripture verse. <laughs> See, God knew this woman needed to know that she was marvelously created yes. and not an accident. Her perspective changed dramatically once she understood that God had crafted her in her mother's womb. Many of us haven't fully grasped the significance of God's creative work. God wants us to know who we are. And he wants us to know who, can, who we can become. Why is it we believe about our, why is it that we believe about how we began, how we were created so important in our belief system? You see, because if evolution is true, then we are just a cosmic accident. We evolved from animals with no greater value and no greater worth, worth than an animal. And when we die, as my grandpa used to say, me, I die, I'll go a hole in the ground. <clears throat> no, Papa, there is more to life than death. Mm -hmm. There's something that happens. But if we evolve, when we, we're going to become eventually food for the dirt. And the animals and the, the maggots and, 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 and the fish, if you're trying to drown. I mean, that's all it is. Is, is that all that life is? We're seeing we evolve. That's the conclusion of our life. There's no God. There's no afterlife. There's just living and death. However, the Bible gives us an account that creation is true, that you are special, that you and I are spiritual. That you and I are significant and that God cares very much for you. Amen. You have a destiny, not just here on earth, but for all of eternity. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, for God, I, God, know the plans I have for you. Listen to this. Maybe some of you won't get anything out of the service. Oh, so the song started going well. Wasn't that good? I couldn't sing the song. Brother Alex sang off key. Miss Carol didn't sing very well. Tasha was way off. And Miss Miriam didn't very well. I mean, it was, you know, preacher went too long. I, I missed the, the start of the Cowboys game. I mean, it may go all wrong for you, but this scripture may speak to you. God says, I know the plans I have for you, uh, declares the Lord. The, the plans to prosper you. To, to, to give you hope, not to hurt you. Not to spank you. I mean, God's not the big teacher in the sky with his ruler, and every time you make a mistake, bam! <laughs> God gives you hope and a future. Amen. Amen. So, as we saw, 
on day six, as we will see the rest of day six, that the creation of God's greatest masterpiece, us. Us. So why don't we stand in honor of God's word, reading Genesis chapter one, beginning in verse 26. We're going to read through the end of the chapter, and now we can finally say we are done with chapter one after today. Then God said, I need to try to change. He, he in, in, in the beginning of Genesis, he'd say, then God said, and then he would do some action. Then God said, let there be light. Boom, and there was light. And then God said, let there be light. An animal. Boom, there was light. No, in verse 26, he says, then God said, very important passage, uh, let us, all right, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Interesting. There's plurality there. And here's what he says about man. They will rule over the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, the animals, all the earth, and the creatures that crawl on the earth. So God created man in his own image. He created him in the image of God. He created them both what? Male and female. Now we got a culture... Uh, even our religious culture sometimes think that, 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 you know, even in our, for thousands of years, women were almost property uh, to men, but that's nowhere found in the Bible. That's not biblical. You were created in the image of God, ladies, just as, as equally as a man was created in the image of God. Verse 28, God blessed them. Oh, man, God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, and subdue it. Rule the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, and every creature that crawls on the earth. God also said... Look, I have given you every seed-bearing plant on the surface of the entire earth and every tree whose fruit contains seed. This food will be for you. For all the wildlife of the earth, for every bird of the sky and every creature that crawls on the earth, everything having the breath of life in it. I love that. And the Hawaiians would talk about the breath of life. It was a big deal to them. And they'd say, uh, everything that having the breath of life in it, I have given every green plant for food. I've given all of this to you, he says. And I like this again in verse 30. And he says, and it was so. God saw that all he had made was not only good, but what was the Bible say right here? Very good. Evening came, and then the morning, the end of the sixth day. You may be seated. No part of the evolutionary lie is more loudly proclaimed than the evolution of man. In fact, when most people think about evolution, they see this picture that's up there on your screen. The, the drawing of the ape-like creature uh, eventually leading to an erect posture of a man. <clears throat> but scientists have found it impossible to find proof for the evolution, evolution of anything, including or especially the evolution of man. The only reason they can't find proof for it is because... It ain't there. In the book, Darwin's Leap of Faith, the writers say this, quote, Despite widespread belief to the contrary, the, uh, the fossil record of mankind is woefully inadequate to justify any belief in evolution. Despite 150 years of searching, there are no, uh, uh, particularly after Darwin's uh, uh, origin of species, there are no fossils that have conventionally related man to other species. Most have been conclusively proven false. End quote. Evolution portrays mankind in the likeness of other animals. But God's word presents man in the likeness of himself as a special creation. The likeness of God. Uh, uh, amigo Deo. Amigo Deo. Man is God's greatest creation and will survive for all of eternity, either glorious with God or woefully alienated for God in a literal place the Bible calls hell. In a recent article within the last few months in the Washington Times, a, a theologian by the name of Everett Piper asked the question, what does it mean to be a human? Uh, one of the Supreme Court's justices in 1992 said, uh, 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 it's, our, it's, a, it's, it's our journey to, uh, it's our obligation to find out what's it mean to be human. No. That's not, that's not our job. It, 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 what's it mean? You know, are, are we moral capable of making moral choices? Do we even have to choose our own actions? Do our appetites or our instincts or our desires define us? Can we behave any differently than 
instinctively like our, our dogs and our animals? Are we defined by the color of our skin? Or are we defined by the content of our character? Is there such thing as male or female? Or are we merely products of our environment? Do we come from the prehistoric uh, pond of scum? Do we have more significance than a dog? Or a pig? Or a cow? Oh boy, I hate to say this. Or a cat? Any cat lovers in here? Y'all some cat lovers? Or, oh, I'm, I'm not going to even look at this role. I'm going to just look at you. <laughs> yeah. I grew up with cats, so I'm very familiar with cats. All right, how about, I like this. I'm going to read this again because I, I missed it. What's going on in our culture today? I, I added, he added this. I think it's good. Do we have more significance than a dog, a pig, a cat, a cow, or a virus? <laughs> are we different than everything around us? Yeah. The answer to these questions are a resounding yes. For five thousand years, the Judeo-Christian tradition has affirmed that we are made. I can't even say. I can't speak English. Trying to speak Italian or whatever, Latin or whatever. A email deo. No, I butchered that. I even I even put it on my phone and listen to it like ten times trying to. I'm just gonna skip it. It made in the image of God. That's what it means. That is, we are created in the image of God. We're not animals. We are God's greatest masterpiece. So the first thing we're gonna see is that God's divine persons. Plural. Oh what? I thought we believed in one God. Notice the difference in verse 26. In all of the previous moments of creation, God said, and then it was done. God said, let there be light. It was done. God separated the light from the dark, and then it was done. God created, and it was done. Boom, boom, boom. But here he says something different. He said, let us make man in our image. That, that, that emo, he, uh, uh, he, he made, oh. <laughs> image deo, he may go deo. There you go, he may go deo. God, having created everything else by his word, stops for a moment, listen, to consult with the other persons of the Godhead. He wants us to consider the huge implications of creating man and woman, and he knows the end of the story of mankind. Or as Paul Harvey would have said, the rest of the story. He sees the rebellion in the garden long before it takes place. He knows that the trail of tears that will snake across the centuries because of sin. It will infect everything and everyone. The end result will be for the Son in the Trinity to become one of us in order to save us all. That call on His name. Despite all of that, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit decided to create us anyway. I like this little chart. God the Father is not God the Son. God the Son is not God the Holy Spirit. God the Father is not the Holy Spirit. But God the Father is God, and God the Son is God, and God the Holy Spirit is God. It's called the Trinity. The triune God is mentioned, in, in, uh, is involved in creation. The triune God is mentioned and involved in creation. In Genesis 1-1, we see that God the Father is involved in Genesis uh, creation verses 1 1. Genesis 1 2, we see God the Spirit, the Bible says, is hovering over the waters. We say, well, what about God the Son? But in the New Testament, we see a fuller understanding of the triune God, and we see God the Son involved in creation as well. And it says in Colossians chapter 1, verse 1 through 16, for by Him, of course, Christ, if you, you don't understand the context, for by Him, Christ, all things were created that are in heaven and earth, and that are on earth, visible and invisible. That means that God created, as we talked about last week, you know, all those little micro, microscopic organisms that live in the ditch. Yeah. Those things that my daughter looks at under the microscope in her classes, right? She's looking at that little thing, that little thing is moving. Well, you can't see it with the eye, but God says all things, the, the visible and the invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principles, uh, uh, principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. Amen. We have one God, but he exists in three eternal, co-equal persons we call the Trinity. Amen. Right? That ought to blow your mind. That's just a little glimpse of what God's trying to tell us in Genesis 1. Then he says, I have a divine pattern. Not only a divine person, but the person's plural, but a divine pattern. First of all, he says, we are special. 
God has created both male and female in His image and in His likeness. Just like a statue is made in the image of what it portrays, even so we are made in the image of God here on earth. We were made to resemble God. We are to reflect God's attributes. The Bible says we are special, different, special. God personally made us, as we will see in two weeks, in chapter 2, how he made us with his own hand and out of the dust of the earth. And the Bible says he breathed life into Adam. He breathed life into us. He personally made us. This is a vast difference in how, um, in how we think. It's a vast difference in, in, in how the world tells us that we are. But we are different. We are persons. We can think. We can choose right and wrong. We can speak complex languages. Well, some of us can barely speak English, but that's okay. And I was talking about my grandfather, not me, of course. I know y'all thought it was me, but you know. <laughs> I mean, how many of you can speak a second language? Anybody? Spanish? Okay, Spanish? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I grew up speaking French. You speak of French? In my Espanol, Espanol, Spanish, uh, German? Get your German over here. Well, that's a tough like German. Speak German? All right, or, or uh, you know, I, I can speak, you know, I can speak, uh, what do they call that? Uh, oh, uh, Ebonics? No, that's, that's, uh, that's uh, anyway, some language. I, I, can, I went to uh, Mexico on a mission trip, and I went to Cancun. I know all of you are saying, oh, Cancun mission trip. Yeah, I really, I'm pretty sure you're probably laying out on the beach. But I really did go to Cancun, and I really did go on a mission trip on the backside of Cancun. Uh, by the way, I wouldn't encourage you to go to Cancun now, man. The, 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 the cartel is all over in there. I read uh, Kidnapping people and shooting people up at resorts that happened just this week. But anyway, we went on the backside of Cancun, and when people just within about five miles of the airport didn't even have uh, electricity, they were running it off a generator. And I remember uh, trying, I had a translator, but I was trying to speak Spanish, right? And I know enough about, a little bit enough about Spanish and a little bit about French, and, and, and the, sometimes it kind of uh, bundles together. And I would, you know, I would say half French and half Spanish words, and I'm like, what's the problem? Y'all don't get me. And this translator says, uh, I said, man, I'm speaking Spanish. What's your problem? And the translator would go, oh, that ain't any Spanish we know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so we can speak complex languages. Well, some of us can. You know, like everybody thinks a person like Melania Trump is a dumb, you know, uh, a dumb person. Uh, that woman could speak, what, five languages? Seven languages? I mean, if you could speak more than one or two languages, then this, if you could play music, think about this. If you could play music and sing, and you sing on the right key, you play on the right key, you don't forget your place. I was singing one of the hymns over here, and I, and I messed up, I was trying to close my eyes to worship. I I'm, I'm, I'm messed the whole song up, my daughter's standing next to me laughing at me, you know, like, I, I can't even do that, I can't walk dumb and chew straight. Walk and chew dumb, never mind, walk and chew dumb at the same time. But some of you are so awesome, y'all can do so many things. Here, here's what happens at my house, I can't do more than one thing at a time, I'm watching the news. You know, I wanted you to think I was like, you know, really spiritual. I'm watching important news or sports, all right? I'm watching something and Jessica's having a conversation with me, all right? And I don't know if she's having a conversation with me. I'm focused on the news and then she'll say, get my attention. She'll say, what do you think, Dad? I'm like, I, I don't think I'm watching the news. <laughs> I didn't even know you were talking. Not that I want <clears throat> Pause. Yeah. What can I do for you? <laughs> all right? But I mean, I can't do two things at one time. But listen, most of you, uh, and, and I'm putting myself down, but, but all of us, we, we can speak complex languages. We have passion. We are self-aware. We're, we're self-conscious. We can dream. Oh, I had a dream last night. I had a dream last night that I, I somehow injured Karen's eye and she was suing me. <laughs> and I went into the office and I said, oh, we got insurance. Somebody's suing me. Mayor's Karen's suing me. And Michael's there. Yeah, we're going to sue you. I'm like, what's going on? We can dream, we, we can have vision for the future, uh, we can appreciate music like what we saw her today, we can appreciate art and poetry. I mean, you don't see your dog, you know, looking at the Rembrandt going, well, that's a wonderful picture, look at the beauty and the artistry, no! You know, I mean, my dog, you put the vacuum cleaner on you, the dog disappears for an hour, you can't find a dog, I mean, he's a little, they don't know how. Vacuum cleaner, a monster, ah, they run away, they don't have a, they can't think like us, they can't do things like us, they can't appreciate art like us, and humor like us, and poetry like us. We can write, <laughs> again, 
again. Some of us can do mathematical calculations. I can't do that either. I don't have that many things I can't do, apparently. One time I was going to get out of the ministry, and my wife says, I said, I'm going to go do something else. She says, you can't do nothing else. I'm like, I don't know if that's a compliment or insult. But anyway, we're special. Ephesians in, in, in 2.10, and, and your, your Bible may not have this, but it's in the NIV. It says, for, uh, in the New Living Translation, it says, for you are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do good things he planned for us long ago. God has better plans for us than we can ever dream or imagine, the Bible says. Of all of God's creation, we are his image bearers. Number two, we are spiritual. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. Sanctification, spiritual thing. And may, you, uh, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. A person is a, that's a big word, but a person is a trichotomous being made up of a body, a soul, and a spirit. This distinguishes us distinctly from animals. Our body is the vehicle with which we move through and interact with our world. Okay, animals have a body. Our soul is the seat of the will or, or, or the character, the, the intellect, the thoughts and emotions of a person. It's where we, we reason, it's where we love, it's where we, we hate, it's where we want or desire. But then we have a spirit. And our spirit allows us to, to be God conscious, to, to, to think about God, to worship God, to, to, to contemplate beyond ourselves, to contemplate God and the future and who created us. The soul is a person's horizontal view of the world, but the spirit is a person's vertical view of, of God. Your soul is this, but your spirit is this. By the way, how is your spirit? How's your spirit today? How's your relationship with God? How is it? Some of our spirits were hurt and we're suffering. We, 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 we're malnutritioned. We're, we, 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 we need the feeding too. We, we, need, you know, we need somebody to, to pour in something into us because we, we, we're just not going to make it another day with our spirit and our relationship with God. <clears throat> because of sin, the image of, of God that we were created in is marred and our spirit becomes dead, the Bible says. But God, through His spirit, brings our life uh, 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 alive in order to respond to the gospel of salvation. It's found in, in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1. You are dead. But God makes you alive in order to respond to the free gift of salvation. It is God who draws us to himself. But it's us that have the responsibility to receive the drawing. To, to receive the gift. Amen. Can you imagine one of these little kids at Operation Christmas Child. They get the box and they're like, I don't want it. But it's free. I don't want it. Well, you don't have to pay anything. I don't want it. Uh, I mean, he's got some things that can help you in your life. I don't want it. No, and they're like, ah, oh my, I, I got a box of goodies for Christmas. Hold on. It's awesome. They take it. Well, I got a box of goodies for your eternal salvation, for your spirit, for your soul, for your body. Amen. I mean, you've ever seen somebody living in sin? You've seen their body? You know, let's, well, let's talk about a touchy subject. Let's talk about a meth addict. Oh my goodness. I mean, meth, I mean, you can, it destroys your body. I mean, like, you can see it, it's physical. Or somebody who uh, maybe, maybe drank all their life, or, or, or something, you know, and, and, and just, and, and you just look at, or you ever just saw somebody just living in sin, and, and, and I mean, they're just walking around like a zombie. Miserable. And, and that's negative. Let's talk positive. You've ever seen somebody? Like Brother Henry, who's got cancer, his body is withering away, literally, and here's his spirit. Amen. Praise God. Right. What? Praise God, I'm about to cry right here. When he called me on the phone, I was, I was speechless. I didn't know. I actually thought he was joking with me. I mean, I really, really thought he be pulling my leg. But he was like, and I can guarantee if I saw him, he'd be like, I mean, he's over there saying, hey, nurse, how are you? I mean, I went over there visiting him a few times. I mean, he's always like, oh, we're going to sing. I'm like, sing? We're in a hospital. We're not going to sing nothing. <laughs> you going to sing with me? I'm like, oh, I'm going to sing. What's the song we sang for the revival? What's that song? 
And we sing all the time. It's amazing what crazy can do. Oh, man, he's starting to sing that thing. I mean, I think they heard us on the first floor, and we were on the fourth floor. I'm like... It, 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 it's spiritual. Your body, when God gets a hold of you, not only does your spirit get uh, 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 an infusion and, and your soul gets an infusion, but even your body begins to, to function better and look good. It's amazing. That's right. the, th the third thing is that we are separate. Oh, here you have your soul, your spirit, your body, uh, just to, to give you uh, your soul as your uh, physiological. Uh, your, uh, I mean, uh, your psychological, your spirit is your spiritual, and uh, and your body is your uh, physiological, and then you can see uh, things that go there. My emotions, interesting. The Bible says we are separate. What separates from all other animals is the fact that we were made in the image of God to represent God in ruling over all of His creation. God who has created everything out of nothing has delegated authority to us over His creation. We have delegated authority. God named the day and night, but after he created man, God says, you know what, I'm going to give you the responsibility in naming all the animals. My daughter asked me a great question. Jessica said, Dad, do you think Adam named, uh, you know, because she's studying all this stuff, and uh, you, 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 got the, uh, you, you got the scientific name of something, and then you got, you know, you got the, the human name, the regular name. Like, you know, I'm sure there's a scientific name for a cat, and then you got cat, all right? Nobody wants to know the science. Well, that's a... What? I was that wrong with? PH what? I mean, you know, but it's a cat, right? It, so my daughter was saying, did he name it cat? Or was it that big other name that, you know, you get in your science class, right? I don't have a clue. But the bottom line is God gave him that responsibility. Amen. What an awesome responsibility to be God's representatives. Apart from God, we are just dirt. But with God, we are incredibly blessed over all other creation. We are different. We are, can enjoy God's creation. We can benefit from God's creation. But never should we misuse or abuse God's creation because we are stewards of God's creation. And the most important part, what the tree huggers and the environmentalists forget, is not about abusing the earth, but abusing each other. Amen. Amen. And we got our eyes on all that other stuff, and then we treat each other like dirt, like poop. We gotta start remembering we are God's greatest creation. Let's start treating each other properly, and, and then yeah, we can still treat our earth properly. But each other is more important to me. Amen. Number three, God's divine purpose. Two things: reproducers. Yeah, woo! I want you to be reproducers. When God created man, He had a specific purpose for us in mind. He gave us a cultural mandate. Two things: number one, to reproduce. Adam, God said to Adam, uh, when I'm going to create Eve, I want you to have some babies. Yeah, have some babies, baby. Shannon's going to have a baby here in a week or two. Have a baby. Wonderful, right? Now, let's talk about this and be serious for a minute. The Bible says that a child is a gift from God. Unlike the gods of the pagans, Yahweh did not pro uh, uh, propagate himself upon the human race in order to produce offspring. The procreation of the human race was given by God to us as a privilege in working with God to fill the earth. And we could have procreated like this. Fist bump, you're pregnant. But God did not do that. Let's be serious for a moment. God used the intimacy of a husband and a wife through the, uh, the sexual act of, of, of uh, sexuality, of intercourse, uh, so that we could have children. And that's a blessing between a husband and a wife, a man and a woman. Sexual relation was meant for a husband and wife in the confines of marriage. Anything outside of that is sin against God and sin against His purpose. Number two, not only did He give us reproducers, but the second mandate He says is, I want you to be caretakers. Not only are we blessed by God when He comes to children, but we are also blessed when it comes to care of God's creation. He gave us control of every living creature and every plant for food. He wanted us to be caretakers of his marvelous creation. There was no need for money because the first man and woman in the garden had everything they needed to, to, to not only survive, but to thrive in the garden of Eden. There was no poverty. There was no starvation. There was no lack of anything. God said, basically, I want you to enjoy what I have made for you. Take care of it. Study it. Learn from it. And develop it. Have fun with it. But later we will see 
in, in a few weeks that, uh, that man had become greedy and wanted more than God had provided, which led to their, Adam and Eve's downfall and ultimately their expulsion from the, from the garden. Human beings have taken God's first two blessings and have turned them into two things. Number one, lust. We've taken a beautiful thing like sexual intercourse between a husband and a wife to procreate and for pleasure. And we've turned it around and we've turned it into something bad and something dirty. And, and, and one time I preached about this particular subject in a church and I was brought into the back room by some deacons. And they said, we can't talk about this in church. I said, listen, if we don't talk about this in church, we're losing out. Because they're talking about it everywhere else. That's true. They're talking about it on your TV. They're talking about it in songs. They're talking about it at work. And that's for us, those of us who are older, Kyle Michaela back there, they're talking about it in school. We better talk about it in church. Sin was uh, uh, sin. Sex was created for, for procreation and for pleasure, and we've turned it upside down. We've turned it into something lustful and, and dirty, and, and, and it's not right. And then we took what God gave us, and He gave us everything, and we were greedy. And we said, It ain't enough. I want that tree over there. You can have everything. I want that. We're so spoiled. We're, we're, so, we, we're so greedy. God wants us to be caretakers. He gave it all to us. Jeremiah 29, 6 and 7. Uh, says this, he says, Jeremiah tells the Jews living in exile in Babylon, marry, have sons and daughters. Find wives for your sons and give your daughters into marriage so that they, the Babylonians, they too may have sons and daughters. You know, he's talking about the, their children. Then he says, increase in number uh, there. Do not decrease. Also seek the peace and prosperity of the city, Babylon, to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, if it if it prospers, you too will prosper. Well, I want the judgment of God to come down on America. Listen, I don't want the judgment of God to come down on America. I want it to prosper. I want it to succeed. I, 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 you know, I, I, as Reggie said, you know, I, I, I want to be on uh, on a winning team. I'm, a, you know, not only I'm on Team Jesus, but I want to be on Team America. And, and, and I want us to win. I want us to be an example. I want us to be a, a shining city, as one of our presidents said. On the hill, I want people to look at us and say, wow, look at what God can do through a people who are sold out for him. Amen. Prosper, successful. Now, maybe I want that in my country. And these people are living in Babylon, Jews. Living in Iraq. That's where Babylon is. Real quick, last two things. God's divine provisions, verse 29 and 30, just I'm going to make a little note of this for you, and then we'll move to the last thing. God gave us everything we needed from the beginning. There was enough food designed by God to provide nourishment for everyone, including all the animals. More than likely, you heard me? I don't know this for a fact, I'm pretty sure. More than likely, all animals and people were originally vegetarians. We know that because we will see later in Genesis chapter 9, verse 3, after the flood that God has allowed man to eat meat, but not eat the blood of animals. The first animal, was, uh, uh, it appears, was not killed until Adam was had to be clothed. Okay, it's interesting. We'll look at that later uh, down the road. James chapter 1, verse 7. I don't have that. Let's see. Uh, there you go. Yeah, James chapter 1, verse 17 says, Every generate, generous act and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights. With him there is no variation or shadow cast by turning. Every gift, every goodness comes from God. The final thing is, is God's divine proclamation, verse 31. When God created the light, he said, it was good. When God created the sun, the moon, and the stars, and he said, it was good. When God created the plants and the birds and the fishes, he said, it was good. But on the day six, at the end of day six, when he created us, mankind, humankind, he said, it was very good. At the end of creation week, God proclaimed that creation was very good. You are good, not only good, but you're very good. Created in the image of God. Now you and I may not act very good sometimes, but in, inherently we are God bearers, image bearers of God. In the Garden of Eden at that time, there was nothing out of order. There was, there, there was nothing out of place. There was no sin to be found.
God. Everything that God created pleased him, especially his creation of the image-bearing man. Everything that God had set out to do was now complete, and we will see next week. And so he takes a break. Why? Because God needed to rest? He was tired? No! Because it was finished! And then he gives us an example, which we'll see next week. Well, let me close. I'm going to close with, with this here real quick. Uh, conclusion, and I'm going to show you a video about creating the image of God. So people say that all of this just happened through mistakes and reproductions called mutations, and that very few beneficial ones yeah. were accumulated via, via natural selection and by chance. In other words, they just tell us, you know what, you, you, by chance you're here and I'm here. Yet the more we learn about the body, the more we realize that there is much more yet to be discovered. One can spend a lifetime studying a single organ or the organ systems, and many people do. Thus we have cardiologists and uh, hematologists and ur urologists, why don't you like going to him? Uh, proctologists, well that's a nice one. Uh, Gynecologists, <laughs> gynecologist? Gynecologist. gynecologist, thank you. Don't like that person either. Uh, neurologists. Henry's dealing with that person. Psychiatrist. Yeah. Many of us need that person. But anyway, you know, they, they, they study the body. We are indeed, as the Bible says, fearfully and wonderfully made. And we are God's greatest creation. We are his masterpiece. And in two weeks after we move on from God's rest, we will look at God's masterpiece. I'm going to give you some things about the human body that, that cannot have just happened. And give you some statistics and things like that. But you and I were created in the image of God. And I want you to watch this, uh, this video uh, sung by We Are Messengers. So he's got an, uh, an Irish accent, so just uh, try to listen to it. Beautiful song. Then we'll have our hymn of invitation. 